One of the most commonly asked questions we get at the OAVT is, how do I submit my CE online? I'm going to walk you through that. I do want to draw your attention, though, to our website, oavt.org. If you go to resources on the top menu and you select membership forms and documents, everything you need to know CE related is there. A lot of people say, you know, where is the CE policy? Where's the CE remediation policy? How do I know how to submit the CE online? All of those things are here under CE documents. There's the policy, there's the CE remediation policy, and there's the CE online submission, a how-to guide, which literally walks you step by step through the CE submission process, and I'm going to do that right now as well. So on our website, you go to login. I'm already logged in, so it's going to skip the whole username and password part, uh, but that's what you do. You type in your password, you type in your email address, and you come here to your dashboard in the member portal. So the first thing you're going to do is go up to CE and CE activities. By the way, if you've never done any of the RVT journal quizzes online in the new system, that's right here under tests and quizzes. They're all there. Uh, but for CE activities, this will take you to your CE record. Let's talk about the CE record for just a moment. A lot of people find it confusing as to where to find their collection period. It's literally on the top of your CE record. So there, my collection period started September 9th, or I should say the 9th month, uh, September 1st, 2016, and it goes to the end of August in 2018. Everyone has a two-year collection period. It's at the top of your chart. And as you get more collection periods over the years, you're actually going to be able to click on it and swap through your different collection periods. Uh, but for now, your current collection period is the number on top. Another thing people find confusing, all of these numbers in here, minimum required, maximum allowed. I'll say this, from all three of the categories, you can get all of your CE from category one. Category one is essentially any CE related to the RVT profession. Category two is volunteer work related to the RVT profession. Category three is any other kind of CE not related to the profession. So things like finance courses or coaching your kids soccer team in a volunteer capacity or collecting money for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. We limit that to only two credits, so that's why that's there. You do not need to get any of the two credits, but if you need an extra two credits, that's an option for you. Same thing with Category 2. You do not need any from Category 2, but we allow up to 10 of your 20 credits from Category 2. Oh, by the way, before I forget, definitions of all the three categories are found in the CE policy on our website. So if you ever forget what is Category 1, 2, or 3, it's all there in the CE policy. Um, but again, you have to have a minimum of 10 CE credits. 50% of your credits have to come from Category 1. And that's why that 10 is there. Once you hit the 10, you know you've, you've done the, at least the minimum from Category 1. So other things. Uh, it looks like I've only collected 6 credits so far. We all have 20 credits as our requirement. So when you do the math, I still have 14 credits outstanding. If you scroll down a little bit, these are all the activities I've entered into my CE record. Notice that some of them are blank under period. That's not a good thing if you see it in your account. Those credits are not going to add into your score. So essentially, if you take a look at, say, this one here, I tried to put in the conference from 2015, but my collection period didn't even start until 2016. So that does not count as it did not happen during my collection period. And so I can't claim those eight and a half credits. So again, when you see those blanks, and I usually use my, uh, my account as just a test account anyways, uh, but the blanks are not good. It means that the credits are not going into your current collection period. Now, if I want to add an activity into my CE record, if I want to add some CE, I click on the Add New Activity button. The CE policy has a lot of keywords and tips and tricks on how to search for different things. So say I had a Bayer Lunch and Learn, I could type in Bayer. So I'm searching Bayer and we've really broken down CE into two categories. Either you did it in person or you did it online. There's really only two options. So did you do a Lunch and Learn with Bayer in person for one hour? Click select if that's the case. Maybe you did something online for an hour or an hour and a half or two hours. You pick the thing you want or that you have participated in and then you click the green select button then you choose a date I'm just gonna pick something uh, a random date I'll say 2017 which hasn't even happened yet 0101 and I'm going to confirm it okay so once you confirm it uh, it goes into your CE record and there you go you want to add something else 
One thing that people get confused about are conferences. There are thousands of CE conferences across the globe. We couldn't possibly put in every single conference. So what we created, if you search OVMA is an easy one because we add it, but you can type in OVMA if you've done all three days of the OVMA conference, you can select that. But what if you went to a conference that wasn't listed? So you've typed in a bunch of keywords from your conference, it's not listed. We have created an option. If you search not OAVT, it just comes up on my computer there, but search not OAVT. Conference not OAVT, one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. Again, there are so many conferences, they're not all gonna be listed. So say you go to a conference in Vancouver or Charlottetown or St. John's, Newfoundland or Tennessee somewhere, uh, it's going to be a conference that isn't OAVT worth five credits per full day. And so say I went to a conference out west, it was three days, I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna put a date, and the date is key by the way, if you don't put a date, you're not gonna get credit for it because the system won't know what collection period to put it in. So you put in the date and there you go, you get uh, the CE credits put into your CE record. It's very similar by the way to this unlisted option that we, we have. So we have the not OAVT conference option if you go to a conference, but what if you have someone coming in for a seminar or a lunch and learn or some sort of workshop and it's not listed? All of our big sponsors, our platinum sponsors are certainly listed and many of our sponsors are listed. So we have Hills for example, if you type in Hills, there's options there. We have Royal Canin. Um, there's many options there, including for Royal Canin, by the way, the Veterinary Exclusive Counselor Program. We do have something specific for that there uh, because many of our RVTs have been, have been taking that program. Uh, but again, what if you're typing in a sponsor and it's not coming up? That's when you type in the word unlisted. So again, is it something you've done online? Is it in person? And there's an unlisted host. So say I did a one hour in person activity unlisted host, there you go, one hour. Maybe I did a three hour online activity, unlisted host. So it is fairly generic so that you have an option for whatever kind of CE that you're doing. So that's a look at how you input the CE. Uh, I wanna go back to the CE record for just a moment. I'll just, uh, I'll put in an, an activity here just so you get uh, the idea. But again, you're gonna put in a date, make sure it's in your collection period, and you're gonna go back to your CE record. This is what I want you to focus on because one question people have is, how do I know my CE is satisfied? If your outstanding credits are down to zero, you are satisfied. You no longer have to collect any credits for this collection period, so that's key there. If you ever collect more than your 20 required credits, up to 10 can carry over from category one into your next collection period. That will happen automatically. So uh, you can see down here, and again, my account's just a test account, but you'll see this pop up carry over from previous term and whatever you have will automatically carry over. So that's good news there. Last question you may have, and by the way, any questions, just go to the inquiry section and you can uh, ask any question there if you don't know who to email for the, for the right response. Uh, but many people are asking, how do I submit my CE certificates now? Well, the thing is you don't have to. You still need to collect your CE certificates and keep them safe and put them in a safe spot. And we recommend to keep them for two collection periods, but we don't need to see them during this submission process. You put your CE into your record and that is fine. Four times a year though, the OAVT is conducting random CE audits. If you do get chosen, that is when you need to supply us with the documentation or certificates that you've compiled from your CE. So it is very important that you keep them for the process, uh, for the audit process, I should say, but you do not need to submit them during this process until the audit happens.